Now, there are stages in life where it seems you just cruising through it. And then you come across a stage in life where things don't seem to be the same way. So all of a sudden you're experiencing the symptoms that you haven't felt before. Mentally, emotionally, you're in a different place. Could it be linked to perimenopausal symptoms? And what are the things that you need to know to go through perimenopause and prepare your body for a big stage that it will go through later on in life menopause. Well, in today's video, we are talking about perimenopausal symptoms to be aware of and how to manage them. Let's get started. Hey, Yulia Tabat here and together with my husband, Paul Tabat, we are certified holistic nutritionists with over 12 years of experience helping you create healthy hormones and healthy body naturally. And if you are brand new here, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest videos that are created to provide you with strategies and tools to reverse hormonal imbalances, gut health issues, lose weight completely naturally and create a body of your dreams. Now, perimenopause is the stage that women go through before they reach menopause. And if you're ignoring the earlier symptoms of it, so things keep popping up, but you're ignoring them, then you can experience big problems as you go through perimenopause and approaching menopause. It's important to pay attention to these early symptoms and be able to manage and reverse them in order to experience different quality of life. And before we go any further, grab yourself a free weight loss formula that is going to go through strategies and recipes to help you start losing weight and approach weight loss from a completely different holistic, nurturing and healthy perspective. So grab yourself a free copy. So as I said, perimenopause is a stage that we go through before we experience menopause. So let's talk about the first symptom and it is weight gain. And it's that excess weight just keeps on creeping up, especially around the belly area that is very hard to release. And it seems that I call it weight loss resistance. You just do seemingly all the right things, but your body's just not releasing that extra weight. Now, the next symptom can be sleep issues. So you could be struggling to fall asleep or waking up in the middle of the night again due to hormonal fluctuations, which can be too high or too low. And also you might notice changes to your libido and how it's going down compared to where it was before. And also how your, your mood changes and you have a lot of mood swings and you're happy one minute and sad the next minute and you're more irritable and everything triggers you, including people just standing and breathing next to you. So let me know, do any of the symptoms sound familiar? Let me know in the comment section if you're experiencing any of these. Now, our symptoms are our communication tool. And the earlier we start catching them, the earlier we start understanding, oh, I'm actually not falling asleep that well, or I'm not actually not sleeping well, actually, I'm feeling a lot more fatigued than ever before. When I wake up in the morning, I don't feel refreshed. I don't feel as productive. I don't feel as focused. I don't feel as maybe excited about things around me. And I'm gaining some weight and I'm having some issues with uh, sort of my mood. So the sooner you start paying attention to these symptoms and start taking action, the better it is going to be because the more things progress and are left there, the worse it is. And it may be more uh, trickier to reverse certain things and it may take, take more time it, and then may affect other areas of your health by that stage already. So um, let's be, be smart about it and catch it early and take action and get the support you need to get on the other side. Now, there are certain hormones that you can assess in terms of where you are at with regards to your hormone levels. And this one area makes me feel rather frustrated because we have worked with a lot of clients who came to us with symptoms of fatigue and hair loss and uh, poor sleep. And perhaps they really started to struggle with their focus and just, you, they're not able to focus and be productive in their work. A lot of the clients we work with are professional females and a lot of them want to achieve things in life and they have their jobs or their businesses to run and they need that focus. They need that productivity. And when it starts to flag due to that fatigue, it starts to become more difficult. 
Now, one of the things that you will probably want to assess, especially if you have fatigue and you have hair loss and you have problems with your weight, is going to be your thyroid levels. So you can test TSH, T3 and T4 thyroid levels. Just that's the very basic thyroid panel and see where you at. And your TSH levels ideally need to be below 2 to 2.5. In the medical world, above 2.5 is still considered normal, but a lot of women will start to experience symptoms and there's signs to support that as well. So you want it to be below 2.5. And you want your T3 and T4 levels to be in the middle of the range. Again, if your T3 or T4 level is towards the bottom of the range, you have a problem even though it seems normal. If T3 and T4 levels are towards the top of the range, you also have a problem. And it may be that, you know, we need to do something there. So when we work with our clients, we work with ideal ranges because being in a sort of normal range, but too low or too high can already result in symptoms. And this is why a lot of our clients realize that they just, they can't get there with their doctors. I've been there myself. I've been to doctors with a, a higher TSH level that looks looked normal on the thyroid panel. Uh, but my doctor said, well, you know, everything's fine. Your thyroid's working well. And, and I had all the symptoms. So it's very important to understand that you've got your symptoms and they matter. You've got your blood work. You need to know not only ideal ranges, but also how hormones interact with each other. So thyroid is one of the hormones that you can check. And another important three hormones that you can test for is estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. So estrogen and progesterone need to be tested together again when we work with our clients, we look at the fluctuations of their hormones at the reference at how they relate to each other, the ranges that they are in versus just looking at one separate hormone and assessing a whole picture. So estrogen and progesterone need to be tested together at a certain stage of your cycle. And then testosterone also needs to be assessed because if it's too high or if it's too low, you will start to experience problems. Now with estrogen, progesterone and testosterone, it's difficult sometimes to get those tests from your doctor, especially if your cycle is normal. And I can give you one of the examples from our clients. She came to us with a lot of fatigue. She came to us experiencing weight gain and insulin resistance. And one of the first things that I told her, okay, let's test your hormones. Let's test your thyroid. Let's test your estrogen, progesterone. She said, well, you know, I've talked to my doctor by testing my estrogen and progesterone, but the doctor said, well, your period is normal. I said, no, okay, we're not going to take that advice. We're going to test you for that. And you know what happened? She actually did have estrogen dominance in the end. And we, we established that. So you need to understand that, yes, doctors are great and they do the, the work that they need to do. They're trained within a certain limited system that separates people into different parts and doesn't see your body as a single whole being, as a holistic, holistic being where everything is connected and interlinked. And you need to go outside of the system sometimes to solve things. So these are the hormones that you can test. And obviously, if your period, if your cycle is irregular, then you will need to test some extra hormones. But these will give you a very good understanding as to where you are at. And again, estrogen dominance is linked to a lot of health issues. Estrogen dominance is linked to poor gut health function. usually estrogen dominance can be linked to inflammation in the body. Estrogen dominance can even lead to cancer if it's not addressed. So it is important to understand where you at with your hormones and understand that your symptoms can be linked to that and understand what it is that you need to work on in order to move forward. Okay, so what can you do to move forward? That is a very important question. And before we even get to the diet and lifestyle side of things, I want you to understand that what plays a major role in your healing process is a balanced nervous system. And if you are a female in your mid 30s and 40s and 50s and beyond, yes, and especially if you're an active female, so you have kids and you have work and you have other responsibilities in life, you need to assess your levels of stress and understand, is this something I can do to help my body 
be less stressed and under less pressure. And it's not that you have to make a major dramatic change and you know, stop doing what you're doing, but it's that the, you need to understand ways to assist your body better through this. So you start to feel in a place where you feel more nurtured, more nourished, more connected to yourself. So that is the first step and so everything else will fit into it because when you're in a place where you're managing things better, so you're, you're not going through that chronic stress that by itself can start draining your adrenals, can result in thyroid imbalances, hormonal imbalances, it can even affect your gut health and then result in other issues. So let's just start from that space where you f are feeling more centered, more connected. When we work with our clients, this is something that we do with them. So start there. So the second step is nutrition and lifestyle. And hey, think about that. How can you offload that burden on your body? How can you reduce toxins? How can you help your liver and your gut and your organs function better? How can you reduce inflammation in your body? How can you create that environment where your body receives what it needs, where your body is in a place where it can cleanse itself efficiently, where it can start rebuilding any damage that's been done to um, your liver, for example, due to a fatty lifestyle or uh, unhealthy lifestyle. And that is a major organ that helps your hormone conversion and production. How about your gut health? How about your adrenal health? And adrenal health is majorly important in helping you prepare yourself for menopause. So how can you optimize those things? And that is going to be also through nutrition and lifestyle. So let's switch you to an anti-inflammatory diet that is based on plants, that is based on whole foods, where you are eating abundance of carbohydrates, which are great for your hormones, and science proves that. We know that carbohydrates are excellent for your thyroid, and low-carbohydrate diets are associated with reduced thyroid function. So how can we switch you to the right lifestyle plan so you are nurturing and nourishing yourself, and you are feeling more energetic and more productive, and you are able to sleep better because, again, those trigger foods are not causing inflammation, are not causing disruption to your hormones and to your bodily systems. So how can you do that? Whole foods, plant foods, lifestyle, the right ratios, the right lifestyle, the right things that you are eating to address your specific needs and rebuild your body the natural way. And then let's look at deficiencies. Could you be deficient in certain areas? You certainly could. And could those deficiencies be affecting your adrenal health and your thyroid health? Absolutely yes. Could they be causing inflammation in the body? Absolutely yes. So we need to rebuild that. And we also need to address, again, your adrenal health is majorly important when it comes to you going through perimenopause and stepping into menopause. So how can you rebuild all your systems and support your body? And what about all the extra things that you can do? Meditation and exercise and perhaps acupuncture or certain other alternative therapies to support your body. So that's what we're talking about. We are talking about a holistic change where you are doing the right things for your body and your body responds to you and says thank you and shows that what you're doing is working and you are having more energy and you are having more productivity and you're having more ease and flow in life and more connection to your raw self. That is what we're talking about. So the bottom line is this, ignore the symptoms, pay the price later. There is no other way around it. And if you are not that type of person, if you are that type of person who prioritizes your health, who is ready to step up and do all you need to do to help your body thrive, then let's hop on a free 15-minute call to see if or how we might be able to help you inside our coaching program. We'll look at your current health situation, we'll assess your symptoms, we'll look at what might be the best plan for you to move forward and how we might be able to help you. So grab yourself a spot, that's the link on the screen, and we look forward to talking to you. And join me in our next video where we are going to talk about estrogen and how to manage it.